So, in this video, I'm going to talk about the practice of arranging classical pieces of music for synthesizers and electronic instruments. Now, right at the end, I have an example of a piece that I did. It was from my Rediscover tapes. I did it in the 1990s. And I think from that, um, I've certainly learned a few things, uh, which I will pass on to you as uh, hints and tips and tricks, which will certainly help if you decide to try this. Now, even if you are not a classical musician and aren't classically trained, don't worry, there is a workaround, which we'll discuss later. But if this is new to you, or it's something you haven't thought about or explored, it's worth having a listen to some pieces which other musicians have done. And the absolute classic in this area has to be Wendy Carlos's Switched On Bark. Now, this was released in 1968. Dr. Robert Moog made his first modular synthesizer system in the mid-1960s. And synths were generally used to create experimental pieces of music. And Wendy Carlos had a Moog modular synth system and thought it could be used to produce real music, not just experimental music. Who would have thought it? But this was an absolutely groundbreaking record and it brought synthesizers to the public attention. In fact, the record, it, it won many, many awards and it was number 10 in the American Billboard charts at the time. Wendy followed this up with the well-tempered synthesizer, I think in 1969. And then in the 70s, she released Switch On Bark 2. These are all probably available on the streaming service of your choice. Now, I didn't discover Switch on Bark until the late 70s or early 80s, but it was certainly influential in my desire to create electronic music. Now, another album which I really liked was Tomita's Snowflakes Are Dancing. That's a piece by Debussy, who is probably best known for his Claire de Lune. Tomita created electronic versions of a lot of his music. And later on, he went on to produce versions of Mazorksy's Pictures at an Exhibition and Stravinsky's Firebird Suite. No mean feat. So producing electronic versions of classical music goes way back. And at the time, there was always this little bit of discussion. Would Bach have used synthesizers if they had been available? Would Debussy have used a synthesizer to create and record his pieces of music if the technology was available at the time? People often have the idea that classical composers were stuffy in some way. But the ones whose music has stood the test of time were pioneers in the sort of music which they wrote. So I have no doubt that Bach would have embraced the synthesizer, as would Debussy. And who knows what amazing pieces of music they would have written. Now, the piece I recorded back in the 90s was Eric Sarty's Gymnopede No. 1. Now, if the name doesn't ring a bell, you will almost certainly have heard this in a movie or an advert somewhere. It is often rated as one of the most tranquil pieces of music ever written. Now, the name Gymnopede or Gymnopedi comes from a, a Greek festival, a Spartan festival, where young men would dance and try to outperform themselves. Now, if that sounds like breakdancing, you will realise that there's nothing new under the sun. Although in Sparta, I think uh, clothing was optional. So I will explain how I recorded the piece and give you some tips on how you might do it better. Now, the piece is deceptively simple. It was written for piano, so I thought I would start by creating an original piano version. So that's what I did. And then I quantized the heck out of it. At least that's what it sounds like on this recording. MIDI sequences were a new thing and they had some fantastic features. I mean, the ability to adjust a single note's timing, position, duration, velocity, a single note, change the sound that a single note had. This was just absolutely revolutionary compared with recording to analog tape. So given a set of tools, the temptation is to use them. And one of the brilliant tools in MIDI sequences was the quantize function. So I'm fairly sure I just hit the 100% quantize function to make sure everything lined up exactly and it was a perfect recording. 
Now, a few years ago, I remember reading the result of a scientific study done to find out why some performers, some musical performers, were better than others, or at least produced music which sounded better, which felt better, which was more human or emotional than others. And the result of this study found that those performers at the top of the list made little micro adjustments to the timing of the notes that they were playing. Now, I think these changes were probably indiscernible to the average ear, but our ears, or at least our brains, did interpret these changes as being a better performance, a more emotional performance, a more human performance. So I think that's really interesting. And you can use that knowledge to create better, more human performances certainly by not quantizing everything 100%. Now what most sequences also offer is a percentage quantize function. So instead of slamming those 100% to the beat, you can quantize them by 10% or 50% or 80%. So you still retain a, 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 an amount of humanization, shall we say, but without turning it into a 100% mechanical performance. Now another tool, which is very tempting to use, was the randomize function. And what I occasionally did was to quantize something 100% and then offset that by a small random amount. I think some sequences call this a humanize function. Now, if you think about this for more than two seconds, you will realize that it is anything but human. All you get is a set of notes which have been offset by random amounts, not by human amounts. And the offsets are certainly not the way a human player would offset the notes. So I don't do that anymore. You might want to try that with particular sections of particular pieces of music, but not if you're going for human expression. And just to be clear about what quantization can affect, you can quantize the note timing, the note duration and the note velocity. So there are plenty of opportunities to mess things up and to make a piece more mechanical. Now, the second tip, if you can call these tips, that concerns the selection of the sounds. Different sounds don't necessarily respond the same way to the same playing technique. So, for example, if you had a line which was originally recorded with a violin, for example, and then switched that out for a trumpet, you would probably find that the articulations that you used when recording the violin line didn't really work with the trumpet. In other words, the sound you use informs the way that you play it. So a low with a MIDI recording, you can simply change the sound that each music line is playing and see what that sounds like. To get the best result, I think you need to select the sound for each music line before you record it. Now, this will be noticeable to a greater or lesser degree, depending on the original sound used and the new sounds that you experiment with. But I think it's something worth pointing out and taking note of. Now, in this piece, everything was derived from a piano sound and the recording was made on the basis that it was going to be played on the piano. When you substitute the piano sound for other sounds, sometimes the articulations just aren't quite right. Now, this may be a subtle thing, depending on the sounds you use, but if I was to do this again, I would certainly try selecting the sounds for each part and playing the parts with those sounds, rather than simply recording it with the piano and then trying different sounds to see what they sounded like. So if all that sounds like hard work, well, uh, who said being a musician was easy? However, if you just want to experiment with this process, and it is massive amount of fun, it absolutely is, then there are hundreds, probably thousands of classical music MIDI files freely available on the web. So this is just an example of the amount and number of free classical MIDI files out there on the web. So if we enter this into Google, there are uh, a lot, <laughs> a lot of results. Uh, so here are just a couple of the sites, uh, some of the top sites. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. It sounds German. Uh, Kunderstadt or Fuge or Fugue. Um, but this has uh, arrangements of files by composer. There are thousands of files here. You can explore. I'll put a link in the description too. And uh, this is another one which has been running for uh, decades, actually, classical archives. 
and again there are lists of composers uh, these have I think millions they say they have millions of recordings um, I don't know if they are all MIDI files but anyway these are two resources you can check out the links will be in the description so if you want to experiment with creating synthesized and electronic versions of classical music there is a lot of material out there you can play with pick a piece you like and rearrange it for synthesizer so my 1990s version of Sarty's Gymnopede is coming up I hope you found this video interesting and useful and if you create any electronic versions of classical pieces then do let me know and if you did find this helpful and useful and interesting then please do consider subscribing ring the bell thank you and click the big thumb and as always thank you ever so much for watching i will see you in the next video